So, Haley, we've talked about things on one side and things on the other side. You have the notion of a health sweet spot. Yes, I do, because you could see you wouldn't want to prevent heart disease by living a life full of infection and dying from tuberculosis or all the other things that you might suffer from. On the other hand, uh, the process of aging in the United States, we see this increased risk of heart disease and of diabetes. Uh, my hope is that we, what we could do is learn from the compar comparisons between populations to find out where would there be a health sweet spot, like in tennis, the best place to hit the ball, where you have lower infection, but lower cholesterol, better heart results. And I think that um, we are likely going to require to have significant changes in lifestyle in terms of increased activity, uh, decreased uh, weight gain, as well as keeping ourselves from being infected, I think we could find a health sweet spot where most people are able to live to old age without risk of heart disease, but without the downsides of the harsh environment. It's a nice idea, living. the health sweet spot. This sounds a little bit, though, like what we've all been told by public health people and our doctors they say, eat less, exercise more, please eat less and exercise more, please, 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 and the obesity keeps going up dramatically every single decade. I, one of the things that's happened with me is actually seeing the data on the Tamane has affected me. Uh -huh. It's affected how I eat, how I exercise. They're a lesson for us when you see that a whole population can live to old age without getting diabetes or heart disease, you ask yourself, what do I want to change in my life? So what, what, did, what, did you change, what did you change in your life? I increased my exercise, I decreased my consumption. How quickly of, do you wear on a mountain bike? Well, I just keep repairing my mountain bike, because <laughs> <laughs> I love that bike. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I've also made an effort to reduce my consumption of refined carbohydrates, and in particular, to cut out carbohydrate consumption at night. And it's very much helped with weight control for me. And uh, all my biomarkers, I'm monitoring my own biomarkers, and all my biomarkers are going in the right direction. I've had hypertension, and I would very much like to not have to be on medication the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the Tamani for me are a guiding light on some of the important things that we have to do. So maybe if everybody knew more about the possibility of living a healthy life, that might help them to do what they need to do. I think that the knowledge that you can translate your behavior into good outcomes for yourself makes a difference. I don't think it's enough. I think we still have to figure out a way to um, fight all the forces that are going in the same direction for us. So they're building supermarkets and malls so we can park as close as we could to the door so we could do the least exercise possible. And the array of foods that are available to us, we can't go down a strip mall without 15 fast food restaurants that are begging us to come and With eat perfect there. combinations of fat, salt, and sugar ready for us. Ready because the big problem that I think we face is that in the past, we didn't have enough of that stuff. We were always short on salt, on fat, on sugar. So when we, in the past, when there was some bounty, everybody felt the need to eat as much of it as they could. Except some people might not have especially liked it, but that didn't go well for them back with them. That's right. So I, I think that we have this as part of our heritage that it's hard for us.
to resist those temptations. Even though we have more than we need, it's hard for us to stop from eating or to force ourselves to exercise. In the past, people exercised like we talked about early on uh, because they had to eat. <laughs> they didn't have a choice not to exercise. And so people got more exercises than they actually wanted. They had to force themselves to work that extra hour to get enough food. So now we have a tendency, if we can work less, we're happier to do that. Life is better now, but it could be better yet if we imitated some of the ways of people living elsewhere. I think that's the case. I, and I think it's going to require that we do some things that don't feel natural to us. Like walking more. Like walking more. Do, like we, do we have to give up chocolate? I don't think we have to give up any one thing. It's all a matter of the total and moderating on the total. Sounds possible. Good.